Well, good morning. It's good to see everybody this morning, and I'd like to wish all the ladies in the house a happy Mother's Day. I hope you have a wonderful day. Uh, by way of announcements, uh, you'll turn in your bulletin. Wednesday, our, our program will be as usual. Meal starts at 6, the youth department starts at 7, and uh, midweek Bible study starts at 7 down here in the auditorium as well. Um, May the 29th, Sunday after the service, we will have our quarter, uh, monthly, our monthly fellowship luncheon. And then if you'll make plans on June 18th to join us for Family Fun Day, there's a list of things that will be going on and lunch will be served. If you'll turn over on the back of your bulletin, there's a special announcement about the, uh, the pork that is to be sold if you need to if you're interested, see Mr. Ronnie Anderson. Ronnie Anderson is right there sitting next to Rich. Or Hope Smith. Hope Smith right there on the other side of Rich. And, uh, and they will get you pointed in the right direction. Um, our pastor's information is on the back. Our youth minister of youth's information is on the back as well. And then our church information as well as our website. Uh, are there any other announcements? Before we go to the Lord in prayer, I would like to say, uh, Brother Jim, it's good to see you in the services. Amen. You're very welcome. Uh, if there's nothing else, let us, uh, let us have a word of prayer and then we'll begin our service. Father, we do thank you for a beautiful, a beautiful morning to come out and to study uh, your word in Sunday school. But now as we go through our worship service, I pray that, you're, that you are lifted high and, uh, from our hearts and our song service. And as we open your word, Father, we are uh, receptive to that word. And we thank you for that word that has already been anointed and it, and it will not return unto you void. And Father, we do thank you and praise you for everything. Amen. It's not only good to see Jim, it's good to see... Okay. <laughs> Amen. 386. 386. The family of God. Please stand with us. 386. There shall be showers of blessing. Number 467. Showers of blessing. <laughs>
Let's join our hearts in prayer. <clears throat> Father God, I thank you, sir, for this day. And we welcome your presence by the Holy Spirit in our hearts manifested in this place. And I pray today, Lord, that in our hearts that we would just be filled with gratitude and thanksgiving for our mothers, those living and the memories of those that are deceased. I thank you, Father, for their care, for their love. And uh, we agree with the hymn writer long ago, Precious Memories, how they linger, and we're thankful for that. I pray your blessings of favor and grace not only to the mothers, but the fathers in every home represented in this house today. Just continue to lead us in worship. Prepare our hearts for the ministering and the preaching of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Here's an old song. It says, Bless be the tie that binds. 387. Just remain seated. 387. <laughs> but the choir can stand. <laughs> 387. Bless thee the time that binds our hearts in prayer.
Laura, it's good to have you back at the tea house. And James, on <laughs> whatever that is. Thanks. comments I'm going to make about the home. Here's a song that kind of sums up our testimony of being together. Many of you in the house know that we were teenage neighbors and uh, both preachers children and we've been together in ministry over 50 years. This is called Partners in Emotion. Almost 60 years. <laughs> back memories when Linda kept asking me to marry her. You know about how that went. Well, amen. Today, 
My uh, text is in the book of Matthew and chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 through 28. Mother's Day, 2022. And the subject I want to set before us and stir in our hearts today is a mother's prayer making the difference. There was a song written in 1922 and some of us in the house re still remember this song and it's called If I Could Hear My Mother Pray Again. How sweet and happy sing those days of which I dream, when memory recalls them now and then, and with what rapture sweet my weary heart would beat if I could hear my mother pray again. I remember mother's prayers at breakfast when she prayed for us and she prayed with us. And that took place most every morning at breakfast until about the fifth grade when mother found out that dad could cook. And so mother slept in and dad fixed breakfast. But if I had a fevered brow, if there was sickness or there was pain, it was mother that was by my bedside. And she would pray us back to health. Our text, the 15th chapter of Matthew, beginning in the 21st verse. Then Jesus went thence. He, he left Capernaum. And he's going out from Capernaum. And departed into the coast or the borders of Tyre and Sidon. And departed in the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan, a Canaanite, a Gentile, if you please, came out of the coast and cried. She's desperate. She's in deep anxiety. She cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. What a, what a privileged term that would be. And she said, My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. She's horribly demon-possessed. But he answered her, Not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away. For she cried after us. But he answered then, he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thy wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. That 22nd verse said that this mother's daughter was grievously vexed. And my comments a moment ago was that she was horribly demon-possessed. She's showing affliction to her soul. There's irritation. There's annoyance. And she's in distress. Did you know that Satan seeks to destroy our homes. 
uh, the writer Peter there in First Peter chapter two verse eight. He said that your adversary talking to the nation of Israel, your adversary Israel, and we glean from it on Second Timothy three sixteen that all God's word is open for for edification to us and for reproof. But he said, your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, seeketh to devour and to destroy. Did you know Satan still goes about as a roaring lion seeking to discourage our homes, to destroy them, to wreak havoc in our children's life? That's the adversary of our souls. But this woman in the text beginning there in that 21st verse. This woman in the text, she presents the solution. Jesus sanctioned the marriage feast in Canaan of Galilee in John chapter 2, where he wrought his first miracle. He turned the water into wine. That's another message for another day. And uh, Jesus sanctioned the home. It's the foundation of society. No wonder the devil wants to destroy it and wreak havoc with it. But this woman demonstrates the solution, the answer, and it's always Jesus. And so in verses 21 and 22, there are three simple things I want to bring before us this morning. Gleaning from this passage of Scripture, I want you first of all to think of something that I touched on last Sunday and that this woman sets an example and a lesson for us that we should pray with intercession. Verse 21 and 22 again, Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan, a Canaanite, a Gentile, came out of the coast and cried desperate unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed. And uh, she cries out to the Lord for help. Now Tyre is just outside of Israel. It's on the north side. And here are some Gentiles and in, in Matthew uh, Chapter 3, verse 8, Mark 7, 24. Some of the lessons that we learned from the Gentiles of that day, they had come to where Jesus was. They had, they had heard that Jesus was who He was, that He was performing miracles, and that many folks were getting saved. Jesus had come to the house of Israel, according to Matthew chapter 10, in verse 5, he sent his disciples to none but the house of Israel. In Matthew 15, 24, Jesus said, I am not sent but to the lost sheep of Israel. And, and in Mark chapter 7, verse 24, Jesus is in this house and he's hiding from the Gentiles. But this woman comes anyway. And she makes her way into the house. She's heard about these miracles because that's what the Jews required. By the way, we do not require miracles. It's a, it's a rebellious generation seeking signs and wonders. 1 Corinthians 1.22 says that the Jews require a sign. This woman is coming from knowledge. She's fixing to unlock the door of grace. She's stepping into the realms of the sovereignty of God. And as Jesus hides in this house and she comes in and she seizes this sovereign opportunity and she lays her request at the feet of Jesus. No wonder Romans chapter 10 verse 15 says how beautiful are the feet of them that carry the gospel of peace or good news. She had found in the Lamb of God and we'll see in the next few minutes a joy and a peace and an awesome love that's extended even to this Canaanite, this Gentile woman. And so she has placed her request at the feet of Jesus. Wouldn't that be awesome if every believer in the house, just by way of application, wouldn't it be awesome 
if we had beautiful feet? I don't mean what size shoe you wear, what your feet look like, but wouldn't it be wonderful if we were bearing the good tidings of the message, the doctrines of grace, of God's love and mercy, and the message of His death, His burial and resurrection, and that somebody would recognize it, hear it from our lips, see it in our life flashed out, and that somebody would come before our feet that they might hear the wonderful story of Jesus Christ. Well, this woman has stepped into this place with a lesson for us. Parents, from the time a baby's born, and from conception, uh, throughout that child's life, wouldn't it be wonderful if we were taking them to the Lord in prayer? This woman said, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. Do you see where she places herself with her daughter? This is my hurt. This is my pain. This is my ache. This is my need. This is my prayer request. What I'm praying for her is the stirrings of my soul. I said last Sunday in the message, Romans 10, 1, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. This woman is saying, My prayer to the God of heaven. My prayer to the Son of David is that my daughter might be healed. Again, wouldn't it be wonderful if we recognized Isaiah 59, 1 and 16, that the Lord's hand is not short that He cannot save, neither is ear heavy that He cannot hear, but He wondered why there were no intercessors. Don't you know that He wonders if mothers and fathers and parents today don't have an ache in their soul and a burden upon their heart for the salvation of their own? May we be stirred with 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 4 and understand that Jesus requires, desires that all might be saved and we start by praying for them. And so that's the first lesson. The first lesson is that we have prayers of intercession. And then verses 23 through 25, and this is so important, that, that we pray with persistence, Standing on truth. And there's a lot of doctrine in verses 21 through 28. And verse 23 reads, But he answered her not a word. Can you imagine that? When I, when I first read that, I thought if I didn't understand some teaching of God's Word, I'd think, well, how rude can Jesus be? But then something in my spirit said, Jesus can't be rude. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. I've learned too many experiences in life that no one ever cared for me like Jesus. I know that God is love and that God incarnate that the Son of God, the Son of David, robed Himself in flesh and came to this earth to suffer, bleed, and die on Calvary's tree. He took my crown of thorns. He took my beating. He took my stripes. He took my nails. And at Calvary's cross, Jesus paid it all and left me with a stirring in my soul that all to Him I owe. Sin has left the crimson stain, but He and He alone washed it white as snow. And then when I read this verse, but He answered her, not a word. His disciples came and besought Him, saying, send her away. Now there's two reasons for that. One is because they can't help her. They can't do her any good. They need to get in an upper room. They need to have the unction of the Holy Ghost of God upon their lives. They need an apostolic calling uh, for that dispensation and for that season and for that time. They cannot help her. And so send her away. But the other reason is, is that when I read there in Matthew chapter 10 and verse 5, Jesus had told them, Go not into the way of the Gentiles and unto any city 
of the Samaritans. So they were just obeying the Savior. And if I don't understand Scripture, then I don't understand that statement. If I don't understand that God has a sovereign, eternal plan and purpose, and that Jesus went on in this 15th chapter in the 24th verse, and He said, but He answered then and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You know, if I stand with persistent prayer, but if I don't stand on truth, I was talking to someone earlier this morning, one of the deacons of the church, we were chatting about this. If I don't stand, I can stand on Old Testament Scripture. I can stand on Scriptures out of the Gospels. If I stand on a text that is written to the house of Israel, to a certain person, and I don't recognize that we are in the dispensation of grace, and I don't understand, if I don't understand the apostolic anointing, the apostolic calling, signs and wonders, but now in grace He ministers to me. And what He's promised to us is Romans 8, 26, For we know not how to pray as we ought, but the Holy Spirit maketh intercession for us with groanings which we cannot speak. We have the promise of Romans 8, 28, that all things work together for good. God is sovereignly in charge. And I'm going to be left hurting and confused and in doubt and in fear. And I'm sorry, folks, but I know too many folks that have believed the Word. They've asked. They've sought. They've knocked. They, they, they expected. But it didn't happen. Can God heal today? Well, of course He can. He made the blind to see, the lame to walk, healed all manner of sicknesses and diseases. But He said, I do these things that you might know that I have power on earth to forgive sins. Jesus is not some puppet on a string to move at our whims. He is a sovereign God again with an eternal purpose and plan. And if I don't find my place in His eternal purpose and plan, and uh, I'm going to be totally confused, especially when I read Scripture like this. I can be as persistent in prayer as I want to, but I've got to be with truth. Look at verses, uh, verse 26 again. He answered and said, It is not me to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. I started the title of this sermon today. The mother Jesus called a dog. And I thought, that's all somebody will hear. And that'll be, that'll be in heaven and high wasty before the week is out. That preacher down there at Providence Baptist Church said that Jesus called his mother a dog. I thought it's amazing what, what sometimes people think they heard. Jesus called this woman a dog. And, and if I don't understand what He meant by the children's bread, the house of Israel, and the dogs, which are the Gentiles. See, we, we, we don't understand. We're, we're living in such a day. There, there was really a time, uh, I was thinking this past week with Sean's new puppy, Berkeley. Who is it? Uh, Michael and Lori. They got a dog named Yonaby. Somebody's got a new dog named Lad. And uh, there was a time that you had to feed them scraps from the table. I can't even imagine going out and, 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 and mother saying, I'm going to the store to buy, buy not only dog food, but treats. <laughs> did, you, did you know our cat gets better treated than I do. <laughs> Linda says, Linda says, you know, I, I don't think, what's the cat's name? <laughs> Mark. Mary died. <laughs> Mary's the one that got caught in the one of the Sunday school rooms. And about a week later she, she got killed. I'm so glad she got saved before <laughs> that happened. <laughs> Came to Sunday school. Linda said, uh, Martha, I don't think she likes that dry cat food. 
And I said, well, I'll pick up some. And I went, I, I got some wet cat food. <laughs> she doesn't like that kind. And I'm thinking, what? <laughs> so I've got to find the right cat food. You want dog food and treats. My mother would have said, if there's any scraps left over, feed Skipper. That was his name. Well, if we don't understand the picture there, we're talking about the children's bread. We're talking about John 1.11. He came into his own. The first that he was going to serve with the ones that had a place at the table was the nation of Israel. And the nation of Israel, they would be fed first. And then, if there's any crumbs left over, if there's any scraps left over, somebody called the Canaanite woman, somebody called the dog then to come and get the scraps from the table. That's what's, that's what's happening here. But I'm so glad that, that even the house of Israel, I'm thankful God offered the, the bread to them. But John 1.11, he came to his own, his own received him not. But when they said no, I don't want to sit at the table. I don't want to eat. I'm glad that John 1.12 was penned, but as many as received him to them, gave he the right and the power to become the sons of God. I'm so glad this woman teaches me that we can come acknowledging I'm a dog. I'm just a sinner, lost and wretched, that desperately needs even the crumbs. We sang a hymn a few moments ago that said, mercy drops round us are falling. I don't need but one drop of Calvary's blood. Amen. Just Amen. one crumb from the Master's table. The wonderful bread of life can spring up in me faith on the authority of Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. That faith stirs in me. I choose to put my faith in the Lamb of God in His work. Amen. Many years ago, back when Luther Rice Seminary was in uh, Jacksonville, Florida, and I was pastoring in Hillier, Florida, my first church, my twin brother's church was in Folkestone, over in Georgia. And we set up the, the school annual, and I, did, I didn't know of anything else. They put a picture of of our church and I didn't know what else to put in there so I just said Genesis 1-1 believe this in the beginning God created see there's something powerful about his word if I if I choose this situation in the news this past week with the Supreme Court with Roe versus Wade I'm going to tell you something why does anybody think they got any rights Nothing, I have no rights outside of this blessed book Amen. right here. Amen. It's not my opinion or what I'm thinking or how I feel. What does the Word of God say? And if I choose to believe the Word of God and I put my faith, the moment that I hear God's Word, when I read that I was a dog, when I read that I was a sinner, and all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. When I read that and I believed it, it stirred in me. There rose up in me a faith that laid hold of the crumbs from the Master's table. That at the foot of the cross, I accept His blood. I accept His love. I accept His grace and His mercy. And I'm so glad that Jesus saves. Amen? Amen. That's what this woman found out. Step out of her dispensation. Don't ever put God in a box. Step out of her dispensation and step into the realm of the grace of God. And so, look at it. He answered her not a word because she's not the house of Israel. His disciples said, send her away. She's not the house of Israel. He answered and said, I'm not sent to you. This is not appropriate. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. Somehow, she reached not just his feet, but she reached into the very heart 
of his being. And there that heart opened up with heaven's love and mercy and grace and poured upon her forgiveness by his grace and mercy alone. And the lesson for us. He answered, It is not me to take the children's bread, cast it to the Gentiles. And, he, and she said, Truth, Lord, but the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. I, there was an old song, this, uh, some of the old southern gospel quartets uh, used to sing. I used to know a lot more. Did anybody see my picture on, on uh, Facebook this week? Anybody see our album? Somebody went back to 1972, posted an album that Linda and I made Gospel Crusaders, uh, one of the Nashville recording studios. Uh, the late Jim Reeves used to sing country and a little bluegrass sometimes. His, uh, or his band played on our backup music. And uh, somebody put that, said they were, this is what troubled me. I was cleaning the house <laughs> and found this album. You would have thought that would have been on their dining room table or somewhere on a bookcase someplace. I found this album. And, uh, but you know, I, it stirred, and what blessed me is we kept looking and kept, there was so many people that responded to it from 1969 at uh, Hilliard, Florida, right through Augusta, the first few years I was there, and middle Georgia, and uh, back to Augusta again, and just Sonoa First Baptist, every place where I dropped one of the, we used to sell those albums, now, and, and now we pay people to take one. <laughs> and, but uh, the, 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 uh, the blessing that, that you realize that, that the Word has meant something to somebody. And, and, and I love those old Southern Gospel songs. I still do. And they minister to me. They stir my heart. And uh, what, what, a, what a blessing. Whether it's through song, whether it's through the preaching or teaching of God's Word, but something would bring us to a place that we would exercise faith in the message that we hear. That's what, that's what stirred this woman. She had heard and she cries out and she says, Lord, help me. And she reached Him. Pray with intercession. Pray with persistency on truth. And pray in faith. I'm so glad that somewhere along the way, years ago back in Jacksonville, Florida, when Dad got off the bus, from the Naval Air Station as an airplane mechanic. And those men got off that day at MacDuff and Beaver Street, but Beaver Street Baptist Church was doing a straight meeting. And my dad got saved. And we ended up at Hart Haven Baptist Church on the west side of Jacksonville to Middle Georgia, Statesboro, Mount Vernon, Swainsboro, pastoring. And from Hart Haven to heaven, and because of that, I started this sermon off with that old song, If I Could Hear My Mother Pray Again. Well, I'm going to hear her praise and worship because she put her faith and her trust in the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And I know that I will hear her again and see her again. And I'm going to tell you, folks, that's the greatest blessing I have on Mother's Day. Amen. It really is. When I think about a mother and a father and a Christian home, folks, what season of time we have left in our lives. Let's devote it to having the same kind of love that this mother had 
for that daughter. Because Jesus said, I do these things that you might know I have power on earth to forgive sins. That's what the miracle is all about. And so may our, may our soul ache and be stirred that our family is saved, our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren for some. Acts 2.39 for the promises unto you and your children's children and to them that are far off, even as many as our Lord God shall call. So thank you today for your mother's influence in your life. Along with all those other things she's done for you. Amen. No one ever loved us like a mother. But the greatest love a mother can show, the greatest love a father can show, is a love for their souls. Amen. Would you stand? Bow your heads with me in prayer. As we make ready for a closing hymn, after my prayer, Lord Jesus, I thank you so much. I, I don't know all the reasons why this message went in the direction that it went. But I know it must be with, in line with your divine purpose and plan. So Father, I thank you for the word you've stirred in our hearts. And I pray in my, from my heart, Lord, if there be anyone in this house today and they do not know you as their Lord and Savior, if they would give me an opportunity before leaving these grounds to let me speak with them in a private room with, with the Scriptures and with prayer. And Lord, let me just show them biblically what it means to be born again. To become a member of the household of faith. To have this joy and this hope that we have steadfast in You and in Your work. In Jesus' name, Amen. This hymn, number 515, says there's a land that is fair of the day. Folks, if your mother's gone to heaven like mine has, my mother died 60 years old. And uh, massive heart. <coughs> Some of you got mothers on the other side. Think about the fact we're going to see them again. Amen. Think about the message of this song. And uh, just give thanks for their memory. Amen. 515.
Tracy. It was just a few minutes. We we'll let you go. Linda's going to take care of some recognition. And Sean, when she finishes, would you dismiss us in prayer? Our Mr. Youth Minister. Thank you for being in the house. I'm in the foyer. If there's anyone in this house, something I can pray with you about, give you a verse of Scripture, show you how to be saved. Or if you'd like to know more about our church and you'd like to be a part of this fellowship, I'd like to talk to you. Linda Josh. Linda Jones Josh. You dropped it? I've been trying to get you to drop your last name for years. <laughs> Linda Sue. <coughs> Draw it. Uh, there's a button on the bottom. I'll help you. Did all the ladies register for the drawing? <coughs> if you didn't, I'll just raise your hand. I'll make sure you get your name in. Bold. Thank you. You're welcome. As Don has been saying, he wanted everybody here that has a mother or had a mother. Makes sense on me. He liked that so good. He had to share that last week. He couldn't wait until today. But thank you all for being here. And thank you mothers for depending on God, waiting on God, hearing from God. I was saying... Um, the song that we sung for choir special, that really wasn't what we practiced. But I said, well, it's really not a Mother's Day. And I think Kathy, somebody spoke up and said, yeah, but we talk to him a lot. Yeah, you talk to him a lot when you have children. Uh, but our church is so blessed that we have some godly children, godly teenagers, godly college students, and it's a reflection on what the parents is taught in the home. Um, we have some gifts that gift cards that we want to pass out today but before we do I want Kaylee to read to you the scripture that's on the front of the bulletin and this is to me describes a mother I know there's a, a, a chapter in Proverbs that talks about mother but I think these traits can absolutely be found in a mother that seeks God's will and seeks his face and depends on him to raise their children. Kaylee, would you read for us? So 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7 says, Love is patient, love is kind, love does not envy, is not boastful, is not arrogant, is not rude, is not self-seeking, is not irritable, and does not keep a record of wrongs. Love finds no joy in unrighteousness, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes in all things, and endures in all things. Young people, I know you can say, that describes Mama. She never holds grudges. And um, her love, that's the love that you want to have because it's an undying love. And you lay down your life for your own child. Our oldest mother in the house, I'm not even going to have to ask who it is, is Lou Jean Wall. And I think so many times about, in our old building, you had this, this walk right here was on the outside, and Lou Jean would be sitting in this secretary's office, Sunday secretary's office. Um, and I know that that woman saw a lot of kids in her time go through those doors and go back to the Sunday school uh, classes. Our, our, our oldest mother I know in the house is Lou Jean Wall, and we thank God that she's able to be here. Lou Jean. Emily, would you like to draw a name? These don't look like all the names. There's enough names in there. You can't draw mama or grandma. Deborah McDaniel. Deborah. Oh, okay. Okay. Lige, would you like to draw a name? Where did uh, Cannon go? <laughs> Rhonda said. Ooh. Hey, Cannon, would you come draw one, please? Oh, Mama, huh? 
<laughs> Bring one. Ladies, enjoy your um, gift cards. And this is a gift from our church. Uh, we quit giving flowers, they die. But you can uh, enjoy shopping or eating from Providence Baptist Church sometimes. Uh, Sean, I'll turn it over to you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this day and um, for every mother and just every woman in the, in the church today. Uh, Lord, we love you, we praise you, and I just ask, would your blessing be on all the families and specifically all the mothers today? So uh, we love you and we're so thankful for your grace. Um, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen.